Hi everybody, this is God's Girl G, and thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome! And for those of you returning to this channel to watch this video and you're not already subscribed, I'm going to encourage you to do so by clicking the subscribe icon below. And if during the course of this video you hear something that you like, click the thumbs up, comment below, or better yet, share this video with someone who you feel could benefit from this information. With that stated, let's get into today's discussion. There are two phases that we are most likely to experience in our Christian journey, consolation and desolation. Simply put, consolation is when we hear God speaking to us or see him actively at work in our lives. And during those times, we experience peace and joy. It's those mountaintop experiences. Desolation, on the other hand, is when it's difficult to hear God and see God actively working in our lives. And during those desolation moments, we are most likely to experience anxiety, sadness, and even mistrust of God. And it's these desolation moments or periods of God's silence that I wanna focus on in today's video. Now, there can be a variety of reasons that we experience feelings of desolation. God's silence could be a way of alerting us to the realization that we are trapped in a pattern of sin. It could also be a way to test and strengthen our faith through trials. Now, no matter what the reason, in times when God is silent, there are opportunities for growth so that we can learn how to find the light in our personal darkness. Now, this may not surprise you, but I do hope it brings you comfort. You are not the first person to experience God's silence. There are many examples of people in the Bible who waited on God when God seemingly went mute. Abraham wanted God to say something as he marched up Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son. But God said nothing as he made that journey up the mountain. Moses wandered in the desert for years, longing for God to talk and do something, but nothing. Job's life imploded before his eyes and he wanted answers from God, but nothing. The apostle Paul begged God to release him from suffering, or at least explain it. But again, nothing. Many examples of God's silence exist, but in all of them, we see God do something great as the people waited or as a result of their waiting. Now, here are a few things to consider for when God is silent in your life. Remember, the first and arguably the most important thing we must do in seasons of silence is to keep our minds focused on truths from scripture. Because when God isn't talking, the enemy most certainly will. Satan wants to fill that silence with lies, doubt, discouragement, and anything that he can do to draw our thoughts away from God. So it's absolutely crucial that we stay grounded in God's word and his promises toward us. Listen. It may be odd for me to suggest that you listen during times when God is silent, but we must listen because sometimes he's trying to teach us something through his silence. In many times, I only think he's being silent. But when I quiet myself long enough and sit before him, I eventually realize he's been trying to speak to me all along. I just couldn't hear his whisper above all the noise. And third, grow. As we remember God's truth and faithfulness, and as we listen to what he is trying to teach us through the silence, the next step is to allow him to grow us. Now this may seem obvious, but it can actually be easy to absorb the lessons and truths that he's trying to teach us without actually applying them. We must act on what he's showing us and cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit. If we allow it, the waiting in silence will strengthen our faith like never before. 
and we'll come out of that season of silence, more rooted in our faith and in a deeper relationship with God. Now, even after taking the steps that I mentioned, there will be times when we still encounter silence. For some, it's simply a day of silence. And for others, like Moses, it can last for years. Trusting God is the antidote for overcoming fear and confusion associated with his silence. When I learn to trust the heart of God, then hearing his voice seems to become a little irrelevant because I'm trusting him regardless of if he's speaking or if he's silent. In the silence, we are called to anchor ourselves to the truths of scripture. Now it's great to feel God's love and his presence, but whether we feel that or not, he still died for us. This is where we find the anchor for our souls. In seasons of silence, we are reminded that we are not God, but we know who he is. The Father who loves us with an everlasting love. The Lord who will never leave us nor forsake us. The God who works everything together for our good. Realize that God may be doing some of his most significant work during periods of his silence. He doesn't promise us that we'll see how it all comes together, but he does promise us that the long wait will eventually come to an end and it will be worth it. He is in control and his plan is good. His timing and methods may be a little different than what we'd prefer, but God always knows best. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Bye.